Istanbul. I'm gonna try to pop into here to the hole. And we're gonna try to get some pictures of a show by Misaki Kawai titled Moko Moko Doki Doki. <laughs> you can pet the sculptures. Well, we always enjoy coming in here to the hole and uh, partaking in their generally pretty celebratory installations. Well, I just uh, spoke with the gallerist at the reception desk and she said that they don't uh, have all the descriptions and uh, titles printed out so we're just going to take a walk through and uh, I'll describe this from the seat of my pants. She did say that sculptures are faux fur, felt on wood frames and it appears that a lot of these are based on emojis the paintings are all acrylic on canvas. Okay, I'll just give you some rough dimension. I think this, this one's about 36 by 36. Okay, well, we've come in and seen a couple of shows here by Misaki Kawai. And uh, they're always fun. I enjoy the uh, exuberance. Okay, so we've got, <laughs> this is actually a nice little grouping here. We've got a couple of, she's calling these pom-pom paintings. So let's say this is probably about 24 by 24 with acrylic paint and pom-poms. Okay, well, here we've got a little emoji character with the eye patch. Uh, I'm not a fan of emojis. <laughs> uh, yeah, they tell me that these are like a language, uh, which is, even if you're trying to speak English, is tough enough, let alone something that someone's invented. So I would say this one is probably something like four feet tall. And, uh, gosh, I don't know, 10 inches across, 10 inches thick. Okay, we 
don't have a title on this. It's acrylic on canvas, probably about... Oh... Five foot square? It's, uh, yes, back to our emojis. Well, I do like the idea of a sculpture that's kind of uh, plush that uh, invites you to get up and snuggle it. It says you can pet them. So Masaki is a pretty good colorist. Okay, so she has been uh, getting into a lot of the spray paint lately. I like the uh, the contrast in the paintings between uh, she kind of brushes in the the background and then she uh, kind of squirts in the I guess I would call that almost calligraphy and that's played off against the spray painted line so you've got uh, of, uh, three dimensions of paint going on. Oh my gosh, they've also done a great job of uh, painting all the walls in the gallery different colors. Well, I would be interested to know if these figures are actual parts of some alphabet. This is... Kawhi is exhibited around the world, including the Institute for Temp Contemporary Art in Boston, Malmö Kunsthalle in Sweden, Children's Museum of Arts in New York, the Watari Museum of Contemporary Art in Tokyo, her works have been featured in group exhibitions at MoMA PS1. The Deitch Projects in New York is also exhibited in Tokyo with Take Ninagawa and V1 in Copenhagen, as well as traveling exhibitions in South Korea. Okay, there's always something about placing a form on a plinth that uh, kind of puts it into a different <laughs> different realm of uh, reality. So it says this is a piece of art no matter what it looks like. Okay, that's also kind of fun as you walk around uh, the color of the background walls kind of changes, which makes the color on the forms change, or at least your perception of the colors change. Okay, this is interesting the, uh, because the, the spiral spray paint is coming off as kind of a violety in the monitor, but it's actually more of a uh, phthalo blue. I'm going towards a turquoise blue. Okay. Doesn't get more simple than that. I guess there's actually almost a uh, sense of action painting with some of these. Moko moko doki doki. That was okie doki, but maybe not. <laughs> well, this has got some uh, pedimenti. Saki went in and uh, squirted in some forms and dots and things and then painted over that with a 
layer of pale blue. It's also kind of interesting to see how the uh, little shots of the fluorescent colors kind of uh, make those forms jump, jump off the background. Okay, I like the shoes. I guess this piece is probably about 36 by 48, 3 by 4 feet. Well, if I was going, going to make one uh, critical remark about this kind of work and that is that uh, well several years ago I wrote a piece called Retreat to the Nursery and uh, was kind of lamenting the enforced childish almost infantile type of art that is being promoted by a lot of galleries and uh, social institutions and I always had the idea that that's uh, kind of sad because <clears throat> part of life is growing up living we become at least we think we become adults and we leave childish things behind and then you have to start thinking about the existentialist part of things and uh, if you're stuck in the stuck in a nursery in your little crib and someone's taking care of you you never have a chance to experience the anxiety of existence Okay, so along with Masaki Kawai and Moku Moku Doki Doki, we're going to take a run through of a double exhibition by Carolyn Larson and Roxana Jackson titled Double Happiness. Okay, well, I also don't have the titles for these paintings. These are Carolyn Larson, <clears throat> oil on canvas. Um, I guess we probably came in a couple of years ago and saw a show by Carolyn. I believe these are all oil. And uh, Okay, just briefly looking at here, I would say that these are all probably something like 36 by 48. It's a very good easel size painting. Carolyn is uh, a master at the uh, confectioner tube squeezing uh, style of painting. And uh, I would say that a lot of these <clears throat> pieces that uh, Carolyn has gotten in much more involved in the, uh, the patterns and uh, these are much more planned out, more explicit design. Well, I kind of like the way that some of these uh, squirts are variegated with different colors. Uh, 
I wish I had titles. <laughs> it's like tiger lilies and uh, uh, something else in the back, geraniums. I also like uh, the way the Carolyn will use these very pure, straight out of the tube colors, the reds and the oranges, but then she intersperses that with some of these more tertiary colors, the uh, off-whites, grays, earth tones, kind of uh, in-between colors. So, uh, gosh, I wonder how long these things take to dry. I'm not gonna get up and smush it around with my finger to see if it's still soft underneath. I guess when you're working with patterns like here in these vases with the uh, faces on them, you're kind of drawn in there to look and see if there's some kind of irregularities between the various uh, versions, various levels. Okay, we're gonna try to move a little faster through some of this. <clears throat> oh, okay, that's fun with the little stripes. I remember stripe toothpaste. And here she's got another, uh, another head on her confectioner's tube that gives you these kind of uh, striated, Textures. Okay. Now it would also be interesting to know whether Carolyn uh, varnishes these, or whether she just mix in a, mixes in a lot of uh, stand oil and varnish in her mediums that she mixes with the paint to make it flow easier. Actually, I kind of like this one. That uh, it's almost like a pearlescent white, kind of laid in on that magenta background is nice. I like this, it's got a little more breathing space. Yeah, some of this can get a little congested. Again, these two with the, just the double, double bouquets are nice. We've actually got some brushwork in there. This is the last of Carolyn's work that we're going to look at. Roxanne Jackson. Oh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, gosh, you could probably go back and uh, get some pictures of work that Roxanne was doing, I think, in her studio in Bushwick. I think at that point she was doing something that was dealing with the Wolfman. Uh, okay, so these look like uh, porcelain ceramic with uh, a Delft blue 
patterns painted on there. Now, <clears throat> I don't know the technical aspect of the glazing part of this, and I'm wondering if there are some kind of uh, decals or something, because these uh, details of some of the flowers and fish seem pretty uh, complicated, technically uh, sophisticated. This is a nice one. It's <clears throat> black glaze rather than the blue. And then she's got her little mouths with the gold teeth and the tongues. Oh gosh, we got a pierced tongue there. Okay, right off the bat I would estimate that this piece is about oh, 22 inches tall. Um, 12 inches across. Glazed porcelain with gold glaze. And actually these uh, grouping, the vases with the vase paintings is very nice. Okay, here's the uh, the largest vase. Roxana Jackson is a ceramic artist and a mixed media, media sculptor living in Brooklyn, New York. Her macabre works are black humored investigations of the links between transformation myth and pop culture. Well, that was a quick run through of Double Happiness by Carolyn Larson and Rosanna Jackson and Moko Moko Doki Doki by Misaki Kawai here at the hole on the Bowery. proper for a couple of years we've popped into Bushwick but not not downtown Williamsburg we're gonna to try to get in here to an interesting little project uh, maybe we can come in here and uh, get the what would you call yourself the proprietor the organizer the um, uh, provocateur in general? I think I've become the, yes, the proprietor, the gallerist, the artist, the curator, and the mad woman of this project. Jane Fine, this is your building that you have here? Is yes, that? we have been here since... 179 Grand Street. Yes, we've lived here since 1986. And uh, this space here was James's, James Esper's studio for a James long time. Esper, that's your old man, or that's sometimes man. referred to as husbands and as husband, things yes. like that, okay. Uh, then it was a houseware store for 10 years, then it was a clothing store. Our tenants vanished in a pandemic. It's been sitting empty for months, and in November I said, screw it, let's do something useful here. And now. And you've had. Two or three shows? This, this is, is the, the third? third one. This is the third one. And now 
Now, Mr. Monk, I'm a victim of my own success in this project, and unfortunately it's been going so well and I can't escape from it. Oh, by the way, it's James Calm, please. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes. I always forget your name. Yes. <laughs> We're all wearing masks of yes. one kind or another. So how many people are in this show? There are 35 people and David Brody, uh, David Brody is number 36. We screen a film on the storefront every night okay. starting at 6 and that's his video. But 35 people on the wall. Most everybody is a whole time Williamsburger. There's a few exceptions. We have Francoise Dursay from Colorado and Margaret Curtis from North Carolina and Bert Yarborough from... You know, I'm going to ask you, because there are so many people in the show, I'm going to ask you to uh, maybe walk around and point out some of the highlights. Sure, I will. The other thing that I thought was uh, kind of appropriate or fitting is, uh, you know, there was a gentleman around the corner named Rich Tamperio that oh, has yeah, yeah, yeah. a space called... Sideshow. Sideshow for years and years and years. And every year about this time, Christmas time, you would have these massive oh, yeah. group shows of uh, Williamsburg oh, artists. That's true. I didn't even and so, in a certain way, this is kind of a, like a mini version of that yeah. at the same time of year. Okay, dear, why don't okay. you run around and give us a couple of highlights. Well, this is the wonderful Sharon Horvath, who, um... Sharon Horvath. Project that's not yes, real. we saw her show at Pierogi. Yeah. It's a about a year ago. These are on, um, I think, I think they're all on old hat boxes or baskets. Okay. Um, this guy I love because I think these are so nuts. These? I, yeah, Abner Fine. Um, he's okay. Israeli and he's been in the country for about five years. I discovered his work on Kathy Bradford's Instagram feed. So these are color pencil? Is that what yeah, that is? Yeah, color pencil swastikas. Perfect oh, for. Oh boy. Perfect for the Maga, the Maga age. Yeah. yeah. But Nothing like a happy my, swastika, I always yeah, say. I feel to my, my sensibility. That's Justin Amrine, um, nephew of Joe. Justin Amrine? Yeah. Joe has a nephew, huh? Yeah. Is this guy from California or is he living yeah, here? Yeah, yeah. Well, he worked at Pierogi for ages, but okay. now he's, all, he's traveling all over these days, but he's in California. Good for him. Tom Burkhart's uh, ink on book pages. These, I've sold so many of these, it's been the best Well, thing what ever. would something like this go for? These are $350. Now, weren't you saying that everything is under 1000 something like that? Everything but one thing. One thing. Yeah, the last <laughs> show was the same, everything but one okay. thing. Okay. Um, let's see, we have, this is a guy who was a student of mine a million years ago, Patrick Brennan. He shocked me. Is so this at RISD? No, where, where I, uh, first job I ever had at Alfred. Um, okay. But now he's a grown man and a lovely young guy. That's my dear husband, the birthday boy. Uh -oh. Today's his big birthday. <laughs> I won't even um, ask the question. No, it's a big number, but not that big. Um, <laughs> okay, we don't like big Karen numbers. Karen Hagel, we love Karen Hagel. Karen Hagel, yes. Karen Hagel, with an eagle. Um, I've been to her quite often. These, the lovely Julia Kinnan, who has a show at Kate Werbel right now. So these they are little are works on panel. Um, yeah, enamel on steel. Oh. Mm -hmm. So these are all baked and. Uh, exactly, and it's so gosh, it's not enamel paint. Spend it's a lot like. I've time in Hungary researching glazes, and I think that's what that's all about. The wonderful Alana Herzog. Staples and. Uh, yeah. Worn away a braided fabric. Um. The old guy, Fred Tomaselli, that's a piece of his from the 90s that he gave me. I have an edition of... Oh, this is based on blotter acid blotter tabs. Acid, yeah. Is it... No, you it's, not, of that no it's totally... Le it, there's no drugs on there. Oh. Um, this is a young artist named Kelsey Schwetz, who's, I think, at Columbia right now in the MFA program. And most of these pieces are... What maybe a foot by 18 inches at the no, most, I told something like that. Is... 24 by 24 is the maximum. But okay. It's a bit smaller, so. Um, so more yeah, I'd birthday say most boy. Are, are what most Gosh, I wonder who those pieces I are. I don't by. know, but they're damn good, aren't they? Oh man. Yeah. Oh, get in here. This is crazy. This is this artist James Sheehan, and uh, here you want me to put my finger in for scale. 
Uh, That's not the one that you picked your nose with, was no, it? No, no, I don't think you want to get that one. <laughs> mask on. That is a particle accelerator, um, and you can't saw it under a mask. We have uh, we have the wonderful Matt Friedman in the oh. Matt's Matt work has been in this alcove for all three shows, and we call no it kidding. the uh, Matt Friedman Memorial alcove right here. Okay, well. Um, I think Matt passed away about two months ago, two and a half months yeah, ago. So we're sorry to hear that. Um, we have uh, Lisa Davis over here. Lisa Karina Davis. Lisa Karina Davis, yes. Um, a gorgeous Karen Beagle there. Now Karen's work, these are watercolor gouache, do we know? Yeah, yeah they have like 10 different things in that. So most thing. of her work is on paper. We'll write some foils in there. Um, okay. These I love. There's a bunch of these uh, Catherine Powers. Do you know her? Um, I bumped into a, her. Yeah, there's a few of those around here. James Hyde. Mr. Big Guy. He's gonna show up close. at uh, yeah, Frayed Volume now. It's getting close. Um, Elizabeth oh, and the last one on the wall. Um, Beautiful watercolor. Yeah, actually, she and Karen are a couple, so that's good. Even oh. Mr. Oh, um, these are photos that Rob Hickman took on a, on a he's bicycled across the U.S. three summers in a row. I don't know how he's that crazy to do that, but he did. He gets and all so the way this, across, or he just does a part no, of it at one time? No, the entire way. Okay. So these were all from this summer. During There's the George Floyd Memorial, and there's a... Um, uh, Jen Deardor. Chuck Webster on the bottom. And Chucky. Chucky. And then okay. this is um, an artist named Francoise Durace that I met. Francoise. Yes, I met her at Yaddo about 15 years ago. I'm kind of good. But she is Haitian, Jamaican, and. Now, is this. Uh... Some kind of photo transfer that she's working with no, now? And they're no, on paper bags? They're on paper bags. It's called paper bag test. And I don't know paper if you know bag the test. expression, but it, um, it's a, like a kind of vernacular that black Americans use with each other to, to describe um, skin tone. So it's oh. lighter or darker than a paper bag. And, it was, and there was a lot of discrimination associated with it. Like if you were okay. darker than a paper bag, you were unattractive and unappealing. Um, we didn't have any liver spotted uh, paper bags, I take no. it, I guess. Okay. Uh, there's Matt. There's a beautiful Alana. I love this piece. Okay. Um, Elizabeth and Sonia again. You're actually doing pretty Thank good you. on uh, coming Thank up with. You. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Um, Coming up with all the names on this, you got oh, thank you. Well, I'm not Gary Nichols. Gary Nichols, the one and only. Okay, so this is charcoal and, and is that gouache or Conti yeah. Conti cream? Yeah. He said he did all those. Um, or I think he called it pastel, but yeah, he did them all on site. I think some are from Tasmania. Right, uh, like he is a native Tasmanian. Yeah, it's the only one I know. I don't know if you know the others. Well, he's been in New uh, York for about forty years, so. Yeah. And this is a it's nice hodgepodge. That's Bert Yarborough from Provincetown. Okay. This is Patrick Brennan again. These are Patrick's. Uh, Tom Burkhart. Tom Burkhart. And this lovely one on the bottom and the top is a young woman named Christina Grimm that I've gotten to know. And one more Chuck Webster. One more Catherine Powers. Old, old friends. Andres Garcia Pena, who's just down the block. Okay. We used to play together. Matt Friedman once again, and Jen Dalton. Hi, I like you. Hi, I like you too. Okay, well that was quite a marathon, Jane. You did Thank it. Thank you. Congratulations. Thanks. Anything else you'd like to say about uh, the show and your little project? And um, this is only going to run until you get somebody else here to yeah, rent out the I mean, space. Could be years. I would say the best thing about it is it's been, you know, there have been all these tiny little silver linings to the shit show we've all been living the last 10 months. And I think this is one, you know, I just did it as a lark. It was going to be a lark for a weekend or two, just to use the empty space and have some fun. And it, it's turned into such a nice sense of community. I mean, I, I've been thrilled with the income from it, but I've just been thrilled. Like, showing work and selling people's work and 
seeing. So you've been so doing some people. business. Yeah, but it's that's been good. So, it's been so great to have like a, you know, some way to socialize with people. It's very safe here, I think. We have the window. We open hope so. The yes, open. the door is open. Everybody's got their masks on. The other thing I was going to say is that so you've been here since 1986, and yeah. you have seen this particular street. We yeah, mentioned you know, Rich Temperio. I remember maybe in the mid 90s, late 90s, yeah. there were five or six galleries here on this street. Oh, yeah. And then within a couple of blocks, there were probably 15 galleries. Oh, yeah. You saw it all come, you saw it all go. Oh, and now we're having a little. <laughs> oh, it's coming back a little bit. Well, plus, Proby's coming back now for the short. They're term. coming back to Williamsburg? Yeah, at least for, at least for the rest of this year, yeah. Yeah. Wow. That, that is a, yeah, that is an exclusive story. That's an exclusive Interesting. Story. Well, the big mass email went out yesterday or today with that information. Okay. So it's not uh, All right. it's a total insight scoop. Jane Fine at the For Rent Gallery? Is that what we're Store calling? Store for Rent. Store for Rent Gallery. Yeah. 179 Grand Street. Off in, Bedford Avenue. In, down, in the heart of downtown Williamsburg. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And uh, Thank you, <laughs> you can like this, share, post it at your social media sites, and you can subscribe. And you can leave your thoughts, ideas, comments, criticisms, and reviews below. But as we always say at the end of these, thank you, Kate. Close your eyes and then it's gone. You gotta meditate. Think about things for a better day. If it ain't a better day, see what we can contemplate. Contemplate what we go and make it straight. If it's crooked, look at it. Don't play while you shake it and take it. But one thing I learned this ain't a race, so don't race me. And I ain't a picture, so don't chase me. But if there's one thing you should probably do, my love is erase me. Erase me, erase me, erase me. Erase me, erase me, erase me, erase me, erase me, replace me. I hope you do not make the same Kids. Thank you, wickeds.